Hello and welcome to today's podcast. I'm Richard Miller, Business Engagement and Policy Manager from Cumbria Chamber. And today I'm joined by Scott Castlehar from McMenon Engineering Limited. Hello, Scott. Hello, Richard. It's good to be here. Scott is a Business Director at McMenon and joins us today to provide some insight into the organisation and talk about their recent successes with Sellafield and in particular the Programme and Project Partners model approach, otherwise known as Sellafield PPP. Scott, it sounds like there's some quite exciting times for McMenon at the moment. So I'm definitely looking forward to hearing a little bit more about what you have been doing and how you came to be such trusted partners at Sellafield. And so firstly, Scott, um, can you tell me and the listeners a little bit more about the background of McMenon and the products you produce? Yeah, well, the uh, the company was originally formed in 1914 uh, with the production of the first wedge type DP flow meter. And the company had great success in this in producing the gas and oil temperature flow meters uh, for the oil and gas industry. Right. And, and just for the benefit of the listeners, what exactly is a DP flow meter? Well, certainly a DP flow meter uh, is used to measure the flow for differential pressure by placing a restriction in the flow path uh, and would be used for gauging the flow rate of, say, liquids or gases through the pipeline. Okay, great. And um, I understand they produce many other products too, is that correct? That's true, yeah. After many years of manufacturing various products, uh, it was in 1999 when the company was acquired by ASEA, Brown & Bovary, or commonly known now as ABB Group, who are a large Swedish company. Um, they employ around about 100,000 people globally. Uh, with now being part of ABB Group, uh, the Workerton company was able to move to a wider production of DP flow meters. I'd say, however, it was in 1918 that the company uh, saw a real turning point, uh, the ABB group selling the Workington facility to Hernand Puturding, who is the current CEO. And I'd say set about rebuilding the company uh, to uh, McMinnon, rebranding, sorry, rebranding the company to McMinnon Engineering Limited. Okay, perfect. And in, in your view, what exactly was the turning point and, and why was it a good time to, to do that? Well, Richard, as you know, uh, ABB is a global organization. Um, placing the company in private hands, so to speak, uh, allowed Workington Factory to develop and manufacture its own products, map out its own destiny by selling its, its items within the McMinnon brand. Um, the acquisition of uh, Workington facility from ABB, who we need to understand is a huge global power and automated technical group, technology group, uh, was a major man- milestone for man- uh, McMinnon. Uh, who was a very small fish in a very large pond. In turn, this acquisition also included McMinnon as a preferred supplier uh, to ABB, which instantly placed McMinnon amongst the premier global suppliers of flow and temperature measurement instrumentation. Right. I mean, that's fantastic news about becoming a preferred supplier. And did you find that that significantly simplified processes for you? And, And if so, how did that come about? Yeah, in short, yes. Uh, it was simplified all our current processes, such as R&D, testing, say calibration, which are now completed within our own facilities here at Workington. It has made more financially viable and far easier to, for us to control. When we were part of the ABB empire, uh, this was completed within other factories around the UK and Europe. However, I still think it's important to note that although we are now a standalone privately owned company. The ABB group still gives us a great deal of help uh, in reaching larger global market. Great, and, and did becoming a preferred supplier also have a positive impact on your turnover too? Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, I've seen a, a steady increase in turnover over the last four years. However, although the company has seen been doing well by the way of seeing an increase in contracts and sales, for the current design and manufacturing industry leading and highly specialized range of DP flow and temperature measurement products. And and our CEO has seen that there is still a large part of the engineering market in manufacturing that you can cater for with our current capabilities and has been looking at diversifying into other fields of steel manufacturing products for industries such as nuclear decommissioning, nuclear new build, uh, renewable energies, and the defense sectors, just to name but a few. Yeah, that's, that sounds really interesting. And uh, I hope the business does see more success in those areas moving forward. And can you also tell us a little bit about the kind of businesses that you do supply as well? Yeah, so I mentioned that Menon's main area of business is currently the range of uh, DP flow and temperature measurement products, which uh, cover force measurement, and physical measurement, thermal mass, etc. 
However, as well as this, we also have a CNC machining fabrication capabilities that allow us to manufacture a large range of products for other industries. And these items are normally manufactured to our supplies, bespoke designs to build to print, if you, if you would say. Yes, and, and you mentioned other industries there. Well, which other industries are you catering for? Catering for, and uh, are these local or nationwide? Well, it's funny you say that, Richard, because I'm happy to say that the flow and temperature measurement products are not just supplied locally or nationwide. It's actually well known that we actually export to 63 countries globally, uh, mainly for the gal, uh, oil and gas petrochemical companies. However, this time, the new expansion into the other manufacturing products, such as bespoke projects for the nuclear industry, are still at its infancy at this stage and are currently just at this time limited to local or nationwide. Perfect. Um, so th thank you for that overview of uh, McMenon's background and the sort of products that you're, you're able to provide. And uh, may I also say congratulations on your recent success with, with Sellafield. Um, can you kind of update us uh, on exactly, um, you, you, you know, what, what does Sellafield PPP win mean to you as a, as a business? Well, McMenon currently's business strategy is to diversify into other engineering manufacturing fields. And although the company has seen been a local SME for over 75 years, due to our history of manufacturing a certain range of products, other industries, under industries uh, and potential clients have always placed us in what you could describe as a pigeonhole by way of presuming what our full range of capabilities are. Right. OK. And, and what assumptions were, were typically being made about the business? Well, Manpinion has a wide range of capabilities uh, within fabrication and machining. Uh, we have CNC millers and lathes that have the capability to compete, uh, complete any precision machining uh, needed for any limit, for any, uh, and is only limited to the machine bed size. Uh, our fabrication department works in the same standards needed for all industries, with staff uh, coded to weld a wide range of metals. However, when Brad is spoken, it's only known as the supply of gauges for, and pipe work. And in a certain ways, they are correct. However, our capability far exceeds that. Uh, it is an old chicken and egg routine. We need to win the work to show off our, uh, our advert and advertise what we can do. But if we don't advertise the contracts complete, we do not get the opportunity to win work. But we have now overcome that and are working with Sellafield and other local SMEs has allowed us to be able to prove that we have the means to be a competitive supplier of a wide range of bespoke projects. Yes, well, it's great to hear that the business has moved through that successfully and, and been given the recognition they, de they deserve, really. Yeah, absolutely. And I must say that when it uh, was eventually recognised by Sellafield via the PPP, that we can manufacture a wide range of fabrication and pre uh, pre uh, precision machining products uh, and gain recognition as a supplier for the nuclear decommissioning projects at Sellafield, it was a big boost to the company and its employees and a turning point from the winner. This was the opportunity that we had been working so hard to get for us. Not only show Sellafield that we are, can be a leading Cumbria manufacturer, uh, SME, but also to show others potential clients that McMinn is capable of much, much more in the way of manufacturing a quality product. Yes, I'm sure that's definitely true. And it's also really good to hear that the staff got such a big boost um, from finally getting that, that recognition too. Um, can you explain for us exactly how Sellafield PPP works and, and how the opportunity arose in the first place? <laughs> yes, Richard. Well, I'll try. <laughs> uh, PPP, Programme Project Partners, uh, or PP Models Approach, is set to support faster, more effective project delivery. Uh, stability in design and construction, supply chains, greater workforce flexibility, and local economic uh, benefits. Uh, part of Sellafield's social and economic responsibilities has always been to use, where possible, local key SMEs to work alongside its key partners and help deliver its projects. Based on this, each partner gave local companies the opportunity to bid for framework agreement contracts. Uh, that would allow smaller local companies uh, to ultimately be awarded call-off contracts to produce products for the upcoming larger Sellafield projects. Yeah, so that, that sounds like a really interesting approach. And is bidding in this sort of process new to you or is, is it something that you were experienced in as a business already? Uh, well, Bidmins, as always, broadly speaking, uh, most companies have uh, engaged in bids for large and small contracts. However, this was a new direction that McMinnon was heading with, a new type of client. And as such, I would say it was a big challenge for McMinnon's staff. 
uh, due to the contract being a framework agreement, contracts are not actually a uh, contract manufacturer uh, and deliver a re, uh, an actual product. Uh, the level of detail needed was very high compared to what we're used to issuing. I see. And, and did you have to look at recruiting more staff or people with specialist knowledge to, to handle the complexities of putting this all together? In short, no. Uh, although we were in this to win and push hard to be part of the overall contract awards, we had to look at this as a business. It would not be uh, big business sense to invest in people at the ITT stage based on a high level of competition we were up against. Uh, instead, we used the knowledge of our current staff. However, I must say, in addition to this, we did employ the help of a third party consulting company to help us with some of the more detail. Okay, and uh, in terms of the tendering process it's itself, were, were there any kind of major challenges or issues that arose? Uh, the tender process for McMinnon was at the start of uh, a little difficult. Uh, it was based on trying to gather evidence in order to fulfill the IT requirements, questions, questions around cybersecurity, uh, quality management systems, social and economic responsibility strategies. Oh, don't get me wrong, Richard, as part of the business, we still follow the same processes and standards of that of any manufacturing SME. Uh, it was just uh, we have them badged differently, you could say, based on our own customer needs. So it was a case of looking at what we had and retitling the pro procedures, processes under the titles listed in the ITT, moving from a highly regulated oil and gas industry into the nuclear industry. Uh, at the same time, convinced the bigger Keith Sellafield partners that although we were a manufacturing company and that we had the capability to deliver one-off products as well as having the knowledge to mass produce items, but we could indeed deliver quality products for the nuclear industry decommissioning projects at Sellafield on time and in full. Uh, during the tender phase, we were many SMEs locally that were bidding for the same contract, uh, one of which was a company called TIS Cumbria Limited. TS or a medium to heavy manufacturing company that has already completed work over the years for Sellafield and have a wealth of experience dealing with contracts of this nature. And, and were um, with TIS, were they experiencing the same sort of issues as McMenon, do you think? Oh, yes. Due to their size, uh, they had the same issues that McMenon had by supplying evidence and fulfilling the ITT requirements and competing with a larger local companies to deliver each project, uh, project awarded. Uh, based on this, an agreement was made uh, that both McMinn and TIS would join forces and form an alliance. Right. It, it, was that proposal formulated by McMenon and, and TIS, or was that a, a suggestion by Sellafield, which could help your cause? Uh, it was purely down to the two companies. Uh, McMinn and TIS have been working together for over 20 years. Uh, by way of TS completing uh, uh, some of the larger, heavier work that we could not complete within our own facilities to McMinn and completing some of the CNC machining work and small fabrications for TIS. Based on the on, on TIS relationship, both McMinn and TIS were already discussing the PPP tenders. Um, based on these discussions, the alliance was formed. Uh, the joint venture is known as MWEG uh, Alliance, which uh, stands for Northwest Energy Coast Alliance. And this alliance, was, uh, which was formed in 2021, was the first of its kind in, in Northwest Cumbria uh, and allowed us both to pool our resources and put one bid in for the PPP framework agreement. And I would say the hard work from the team members within both companies working together as one paid off. And NWEC Alliance was awarded the PPP framework agreement and in turn now can bid for future uh, PPP fabrication uh, and machining contracts. And given your experience of this process, is there any any advice that you could give to other Cumbrian SMEs who might be embarking on a similar type of journey? Certainly. Persevere. Uh, keep pushing. Uh, there are a lot of SMEs within Cumbria that have the capabilities to be competitive with the larger companies uh, with, with around this area. However, Cumbria is a small network, and my advice would be to start and work closer with your local SMEs. Form partnerships that meet the goals of your companies and the needs of local communities. Uh, work together and keep the work in Cumbria uh, and help to fulfill our own social and economic responsibilities. Great. Well, um, thank you very much for your, your time today, Scott, to run through that. Um, some really interesting uh, kind of information in there. Um, and uh, obviously, you know, we wish you uh, all the best for the future and, uh, you know, do keep in touch and let us know 
how things are going um, as we progress through the year. Thank you, Richard. Thank you for your time. Great. Thank you very much. And that concludes today's podcast. And thank you to everyone for listening in. Please do take a look at McMenon's website for further information on www.mcmenon.com. And as always, you can sign up to other Chamber communications at www.cumbriachamber.co.uk or check out our Growth Hub website, which is www.cumbriagrowthhub.co.uk. Or you can follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter and Facebook. Thanks again for listening in and see you next time.